as a child in school, I always wanted to be the one that would um, have the exhaustive list of the different <laughs> geographic regions <laughs> of of Canada, the country where I grew up, and the sort of these are the this is where the prairie begins and ends, and this is where the Rockies begin and end. And I wanted it to be my scheme <laughs> that that the class would would adopt. And I think I like taking a far-flung observations and trying to see some kind of coherence and, and systematic organization about them. So I, what I did in my two books was kind of quixotic. I mean, one book was uh, trying to bring together all of language science in one framework. And there are, there's a large community of people studying language, everything from people out in the New Guinea highlands translating the, the Bible into uh, a new, newly discovered exotic language to people in the lab sticking um, little fiber optic cameras down people's throats and watching their larynx go up and down. <laughs> and I wanted to bring this all together, uh, not just between two covers, but in, with some idea that brought it all together. And the idea of language as a biological adaptation of the human species was the idea that I thought could bring it all together. That had the advantage both of um, being intellectually satisfying, because generally in science, the most exciting moments are when you could see a huge variety of phenomena fall out from a couple of basic principles. Mm -hmm. But also just for the sheer practical task of putting all this material between two covers, how do you present it to a reader in a way that it doesn't just seem like one damn thing after another? Mm -hmm. And so having a, th having a theory is very useful mm -hmm. in, in uh, that kind of struggle. And then I, I try to do the same thing for the rest of the human mind.